All right, folks. Well, today we're talking about what I believe is one of Washington's best kept secrets. Scattered throughout these hills is one hell of a story. I just wanted to show you what it looked like on the outside before we actually take a trip inside. As you can see, there's no real street markings. Very quiet. So let's go ahead and dive into the story. All right, folks, so as you can see, this is literally just a trail on the side of the highway. Our story takes place along this ridge right up here. Right on the other side is a sanitarium. So the story begins around 1860, mid 1860s. A woman is born, Linda Hazard. Linda Hazard is born into a family on a farm. Um, somewhat vegan for the time, right? Somewhat vegetarian. I mean, there was meat there, but all the children were kind of raised thinking that this is really weird, but you know, um, poop and feces is disgusting, right? It carries germs. So they were kind of trying to eat as healthy as possible, trying to keep their bodies clean, trying to keep the disease out of themselves. And I believe that that really sparked this entire story because as Linda grew, she got into fasting. She, I believe was out of Minnesota, got into what she liked to call medicine, where she was trying to teach and spread fasting to heal illness after um, a couple of her patients died uh, she was kind of chased out of town in which she went from Minnesota she went from Minnesota to um, Seattle Seattle she started practicing medicine she ended up uh, becoming I don't know what it's called, but like a lead in fasting. She was kind of like a specialist, specialty, uh, specialist in fasting, geez. Either way, she had a handful of people, a lot of rich people, come and try to get cured from this amazing Linda Hazard. Well, this property here, that we're walking on now was once known as Wilderness Heights. And this is the question that I really want to know. This is what I want everybody's opinion on. Was Linda Hazard a serial killer? Or was she just a delusional nutcase? This little tidbit of information leads me to believe she was a, like a nutcase that was just a serial killer. This property was called Wilderness Heights until the gentleman went across the water to Seattle to get cured. And um, in the midst of being cured, he was just randomly shot in the head. But before he was shot in the head, he'd left this plot of land to Linda. So, amongst her treating these people and giving them what she liked to call, you know, treatment. This treatment consisted of 40 days without food. And literally, when I say no food, I mean an orange a day, a bowl of tomato broth or asparagus broth. And when I say that, literally just tomatoes boiled in water and you drink the water. Well, between 19, the early 1900s and around 1930, 1940, Linda racked up a body count of 
over 40. People say between 12 and 40. A lot of people are saying over 40. And this is our dumping grounds. Now, you'll see a lot of stuff like these orange posts right there. There's two more back there. There's one right here. These are all unmarked graves of bodies that were found after. These were graves where they were vandalized by locals and the city ended up just putting place markers for bodies. Now this is the question, right? Linda ended up dying, I wanna say late 1930s, due to her own medicine. She ended up starving herself to death and dying from cancer. So, <laughs> that leads me to believe she was a nutcase to think that this was honestly going to work and help the people. More poles. But at the same time, you get stories where she obtained this land because the person she was working with ended up getting shot in the head, right? Let's see here. 34 years old. 44 years old. Um... So Linda was actually, after working with a handful of people and them passing away, and this is very cult-like, it's very odd, because none of these people were forced to stay with her. But while they stayed with her, they ended up signing over absolutely everything they had to her. She made hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Well, I guess thousands of dollars. All the posts out there as well. She made thousands of dollars off these people. They'd die, they'd come to her rich with illnesses and they would die starving and penniless. Which is, you know, borderline serial killer, right? It just leads you to question, what exactly was she thinking? What was her end game? So, not only did she starve these people to death, not only was she their doctor, right? But she was also the one giving autopsies. People would claim, hey, you know, they died in your care, what's going on? Some more posts. Um, hey, you know, so-and-so died in your care, what happened? And she would perform autopsies that consisted of pretty much laying the body on an ironing board over a bathtub, cutting into them, pulling out organs and saying, look how infested these organs are. After these people are already shriveled up, dead, and pretty much just shock factor. Hey, look at this heart. Of course, this heart is diseased. I was trying to cure him. You know, she was just out of her mind. And there are some crazy stories. And um, a lot of these people ranged in age, right? She did deal with a lot of children and there is a, there's a small town down the road where these children would escape the hills. And like I said, there's a ravine down and then the sanitarium is still standing, I believe, on the other side, but it was actually bought and it is private property. But since this is considered a cemetery, this is open to the public. It's just none of the town wants people to know about this. I've called a handful of places. You saw how it's just a hole on the side of the hillside right so either way some of these kids would escape they would actually leave the sanitarium and wander down the street begging people for food and these people were sticks and bones i can't imagine the townspeople seeing these people in the early 1900s just ghostly thin it's just it's just insane so you know, they would they would sneak into town, try to get food, come back. Um, her practices consisted of hours of enemas because, like I said, she would try to clean the inside of them out, and deep tissue massages, where she pretty much left these people bruised. And once they got thinner and thinner, it only became worse and worse. It's starting to rain. 1897 to 1910. So you have to wonder. Did she see this? Was she somewhat of a witch doctor? Where she used this as an excuse 
to get away with murder and thievery because not only when she these people passed she would rob them of their gold fillings their jewelry absolutely everything these people came for help and died penniless with absolutely nothing and it wasn't until two um, pretty wealthy I believe English sisters um, the type of people who are oh I've got a tummy ache it must you know um, in today's day and age it's the people who web MD themselves you know what I mean um, yesterday was actually Friday the 13th by the way folks what's this somebody somebody put like a little electronic candle what is that 22 years 7 months and 2 months and 17 days gone but not forgotten that's odd that there's just one candle 18 years of age but yeah it took two sisters that um I forget the word I can't think of it at the moment but yeah they'd you know there, there was always something wrong with them they were always kind of looking for adventure uh, they were always looking to get out they were wealthy but you know they always uh, I, I can't think of the word at the moment forgive me but either way they they came across Linda and said hey you might be able to help us out well after one passed away the second one got away and went to the police Linda was eventually charged with manslaughter was sentenced between 2 to 20 years served 18 months and then was released on good behavior and forced to leave the United States where she went to New Zealand Nobody knows if there's a body count in New Zealand, but she ended up coming back to the States where she came back here to Wilderness Heights. And I believe it was her and her son who started construction on the sanitarium that is still standing today. And between that time, I want to say it was like 1909 to 19, I think 30, 37 ish is when she really started racking up a large amount of bodies. It's when she really got carried away. <laughs> it went from 10 people to over 40. Now they say over 40 because it was very hard. Bodies were found in the ravines on both sides, just literally pushed down a hill to feed the animals. All these unmarked, you can still see, I don't know if you can, there's about four poles around that tree. There's poles scattered all throughout here. If you were to count the markings, there's over 40 of these posts, as well as gravestones, more posts. So, more posts. This actually just goes into the hills. I believe it ends back here. But just imagine 1909 to 1930, right? A little old woman in the hills out here, completely desolate, starving people, getting them to sign over their life, their money, absolutely everything they own, starving them to death, cutting them open in a bathtub, and then bringing them out to this hill to just toss them in an unmarked grave. Sounds kind of like a serial killer to me. But like I said, she did end up dying to starving herself. This woman believed that, you know, this was the cure-all. So, it went from being known as Wilderness Heights, it's now known as Starvation Heights. I called around asking locals, hey, where can I find this? There's no real address. Guys, if you're interested in the story, go and google it i am definitely no history major the story is very intriguing i read up quite a bit i looked around quite a bit but please go fact check me go check out the story for yourself very interesting the turn of the century you know um all those kooky medicine makers 
selling their little trinkets, thinking that they're going to change the world and they have the best. This, uh, this is one of our local, what is this? It's all yellow. That's weird. Almost looks like mustard. But, um, either way, folks, that is the story of Starvation Heights. This whole town is kind of creepy. Um, it's a lot of light and a lot of nice towns. It's right on the water as well. <laughs> a lot of nice houses, but at the same time, there are some that just look like they were left back in the early 1900s. I'd love to come out here and camp. <laughs> see what it's like overnight what do you guys think I don't know I'm just thoroughly intrigued by this story more posts like I said it's a very well-kept secret the cemetery itself was extremely hard to find there is no address for it I was able to come across the blog where they pretty much told me what road, what street poles, what, you know, numbers on the street poles to look for. And, um, yeah. And I want to, you know, give the local town folks some respect and not post where this is at. I mean, we don't need people coming in and damaging up the area. This is a part of history. And these, these people do have families, you know, that are still around, I'm assuming, today. So, I mean, don't come here and try to screw stuff up. Be respectful. It's just, like I said, you hear about gnarly serial killers. The Green River Killer was out here as well. That dude had a really large body count. But have you ever heard of the name Linda Hazard? It's really, uh, it's really odd. So, either way, folks. That's my tiny little, I guess, documentary on Starvation Heights, Nolala, Washington. Do yourself a favor, and if you like diving, <coughs> excuse me, diving into the creepy history, go do yourself a favor and check it out. Pretty interesting story. And just when you think about the time period too, you know, over a hundred years ago, actually, it's probably a hundred years ago, just no cars. Well, I can't say no cars, but just not as traffic. You can hear cars passing here and there, but just imagine a little old lady in the woods, starving people to death, dragging them through the woods and burying them and throwing their bodies over hills. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Well, thanks for tuning in.